All right, guys, we're going to talk about arrow setups for, for elk hunting here. And really, it, it's good to look at the, some of the science behind it and understand kind of different factors and how much they can, they can affect things. I think having, having an understanding of that can really help you uh, kind of make the right choices and know, know the trade-offs and things like that when you're, when you're choosing your, your elk arrow broadhead setup. So... Really, what we want to do here is um, it's all about arrow flight and penetration. We want to be able to, you know, hit what we're aiming at downrange, have the arrow going as straight as we can, have all that kind of momentum in line, going through the right place on the on the elk down there, and then at that impact, we want it to, you know, cut through as far as as possible. Hopefully, get a pass through on that animal. So here's some of the science behind it. We're going to talk about. Energy and momentum. So one half mv squared, uh, that's mass, that's velocity. This is kinetic energy. Mass times change of velocity, that's momentum. Or mass times velocity is momentum. And you know, you're gonna hear out there, people say energy doesn't matter. It's, we should be looking at momentum. And, and really, they're both closely related. And I think it's, it's good to look at both of them. And momentum is really mass in motion, you know, mass times velocity. And kinetic energy is the ability of that mass in motion to do work. What I mean by work is, is the, the technical term, which is force times the distance. So if you, if you lift up um, you know, a one pound item, two feet, that's two foot pounds of, of energy it took, you've done two foot pounds of work, say. And the reason, so let's focus on energy for a minute. The reason I think this is useful is is um, for one, it shows what your bow is doing. This force times distance, your bow is doing work on the arrow and that's converted to kinetic energy, that velocity of the arrow at a certain mass. And there's some, there's some losses in here like vibration and noise and things like that that we'll leave out. But basically this is what we're trying to do with the bow. And this, this would be your, your draw curve. So at a given distance of your draw cycle, there's a given force that that bow is putting on it. So your bow is like a spring, basically, is a simple machine. And so it's, this is constant. So um, whatever arrow you're putting on it, your draw force curve is the same. So a bow is really kind of a constant energy machine. You know, if you take, so you take a um, 450 grain arrow and shoot it through a chronograph and get your velocity, that's gonna, th that can help you say, okay, if I, if I add 100 grains of mass, what would my velocity be? You can actually just calculate it from that. And there'll be, so it's, the bow is kind of a constant energy machine. It's a little more efficient with a higher mass arrow. So you get a few percent more, but um, basically that's gonna be pretty constant. So then downrange, that um, kinetic energy will change a little bit because the velocity will reduce as you're going downrange. So the more drag you have on that arrow, um, that's, that's the force that's, you know, force equals mass times acceleration. It's decelerating your arrow. So the more drag you have, the slower it would be going when it hits. Um, and that's why in general, I'm going to say, you know, choose mass over velocity because the mass isn't going to change. The velocity creates the drag force. Drag is proportional to velocity squared. So high, a light high velocity item will bleed off more velocity and be going slower at impact. And we'll talk about that in terms of momentum too, but <clears throat> in general, I'm gonna say, choose mass over speed and go as high a mass as you can for the trajectory you want. And um, go ahead, do you have a question? <clears throat> so kind of going over the velocity with a lighter arrow that's faster compared to a heavier arrow that's a little bit slower. Say you shoot them at the same time, the lighter arrow, slows down where this one has a more constant velocity is mm -hmm. that what you're saying yes so this one the velocity will be more constant it'll peter out less right down range where this one will slow down a lot faster once you get farther out yep that... yes okay. yep and so um 
let's see what else I want to say there. Okay, then at then it impact, it's kind of the other way around. You have some momentum that's left. Whatever, your, whatever velocity your arrow is going right at impact, um, that kinetic energy will now be converted to work on the arrow that's, that's pushing the arrow through. So it's, it's, you're going to get a certain force over distance from that energy that's going to push through the animal. And I think a lot of people out there forget about this side of it. They, they think about you know, hitting the target and then, and then you know, all bets are off. I don't know. But really, you got to think about, okay, what happens at impact? And really, it's what you want to do there is reduce the force it takes to cut through that hide, meat, bone. If you reduce that force, you get more distance, one to one. So you cut the force in half, you're going to get twice the distance through the animal. So that's where broadhead design comes into play. All right, so um, that's where we talk about energy, momentum, and, and you know, really you can't have momentum without energy. They really kind of go hand in hand, similar terms here. But the good thing about momentum is it's, um, it's a vector quantity. So that means it, it has a direction. So it's kind of a more direct, um, a more direct way of thinking about what's happening and how much penetration you're getting. So it it's, means it's in a straight line. So <clears throat> at your bow, you have this force over time. This force over time is, is pushing your arrow and then releasing it. And ideally, you want that force, you want that force to be in a straight line. So you want to have your bow tuned so that your knock, your string is pushing your knock straight in line with your rest. So when your arrow's, arrow's coming off straight, you kind of maximize that momentum that you're going to get in your arrow. If it's not, if it's pushing off, then you know, you're, you're losing some of that momentum. And the arrow you know, is going to do some of this. So, so you've, you've lost some of the energy, some of the momentum you could have had downrange. Um, also, if you're underspined, you can get excessive flexing. Okay, and that's going to cause some quite a bit of loss of energy for one or a loss of momentum because um, it's a bunch of movement that's not now in that straight line. The other thing it can do is cause poor flight because your, your, your tip's pointing kind of all over the place as you go. So it's very important to be properly spined. Overspined is better than underspined. And typically what I found is, you know, being optimally spined to maybe one spine stiffer, I haven't really seen any issues with it. Um, I think the pros will tell you that if you're overspined to a certain degree, your, your setup becomes less forgiving. You know, having a little bit of flex of your arrow as it's coming off your rest um, can help if your you know, rest is pushing on one side or the other. Things like that, that if you're too stiff, that might drive, might drive it off more than if there's a little bit of flex there. But generally, I don't see issues too much with people being a bit overspined. And I personally haven't seen it just being like one spine too stiff. I often target being one spine too stiff. Okay, so again, in this term, at, at impact, it's the other way around. This momentum will now create a force over time on your arrow cutting, cutting through an animal. So again, if you can cut the force in half, that arrow is going to be moving through the animal you know, twice as long. So, so this is the, the center of gravity. So if you balance a point, it's kind of the, the balance point on your arrow. And then you know, the halfway through your arrow here, this distance divided by the total length, that's your, your front of center percentage. And that ends up being kind of the pivot point on the arrow. So I've drawn here is, let's say the direction the arrow is supposed to be going is along this dashed line here, but it's a little bit, it's a little bit off um, for whatever reason. Maybe your, your bow's out of tune or you, you pluck the string or whatever, and you have a little bit of this going on with your arrow. What you want to have... Um, so stability, um, you want to have a design, you want to have an arrow set up that's stable. So if it's off, you want to have the restoring force to put it back on. And so, you know, in rocket science, they call that having the center pressure behind the center of gravity, because that's the restoring force that will create stability. Um, you know, in, in, in archery, they typically talk about an FO, FOC point but they don't really talk about, well, where's the, where's the center of pressure and what are the forces on it? And where does that, where does that need to be? Or, you know, how much vein do you need? Things like that. 
so for, for a hunting arrow setup, and I'm going to recommend a, a fixed blade broadhead, and we'll get into that here in a minute, but you've got, you've got more area up front for pressure to act. So what happens, so here's, a, here's my elk arrow setup. You know, if there's, if there's, so the wind is in the direction of the dashed line. If there's airflow across it like this, what you have on the broadhead side is it creates lift and it's gonna to wanna to push, it, push it off course, right? And the same thing with the shaft. Air across here will cause a pressure difference across it and wanna push it off, up. In the back half, it's really around. Air, air pressure across here and the vein is gonna to wanna to push it back to center and stabilize it. And, and really the, the peak force is on the broadhead here and here. So the center of gravity is kind of your pivot point. So if you think about it like a teeter-totter, if, if this is towards center, it takes less force here to bring it back to center you know, than it would here. So the things you can do to improve your stability of your arrow is improve your center of gravity point forward, increase your FOC, or increase your vein size. Those two things will help stabilize um, a broadhead. And how much FOC or vein size do you need? And I'd really say kind of how much vein do you need will, will kind of depend on what your broadhead is up front. Um, and what I've, what I've found is for you know, a broadhead of, of this size, which is a, it's a two blade with bleeders, but relatively compact, inch to the 16th wide main blade, um, about an inch and a quarter long. For that, I found you know, three veins that are about the size of a blazer or a max hunter um, I've got a few different veins here that I've shot all these for at least a season. You know, Blazer, Max Hunter, Q Fusion 2, Q2i. What's, what's similar about them is they're all pretty similar in height. They're all around that 0 0.5, 0 0.6 height, two inch long. Um, I found that that size vein with about two and a half to three degrees offset or helical does a good job with creating good stability with a, with a fixed blade head of about that size. So basically if your FOC is farther forward, mm -hmm. your vein size doesn't need, need to be as tall or as big. True. To stabilize it. Yes. So you can have lower profile with more FOC. Or you need higher profile with less FOC to stabilize. In general, yep, that's that's true. Those are those are true. And I just warn you not to go too small, you know, um, yeah. And it's hard to get really high FOC with, and have a good long range trajectory. You know, having high FOC is, it's hard to get real high FOC without having a very massive arrow as well. And so, um, typically there's going to be just some kind of range you're going to have to work with, with the FOC, um, and, and arrow weight for the trajectory you want, and then make sure you've got enough pain to support that. And what if you're shooting a longer vein, like an A, A max? Yeah. Um, you max the broadhead to the vein? Yeah, so max, uh, like a max hunter is a good vein. It, um, it's a little lower profile, but a little bit longer. And it, it's hard to predict just by looking at it, but you can kind of look at the cross-sectional area and, and kind of get an idea of, of what's going to work well. You know, so I kind of said this, this size works well. Something has a similar area should work well, although I find that a height is a little better than a length um, for good stability. But, you know, you can play around with that yourself. Shoot, shoot field points, shoot broadheads, and, you know, once your bow is tuned, um, and just see, see what's shooting well for you and what's, what's um, giving you tight groups with your broadhead. <laughs>